Hi, Eleanor. Hello. Thank, thanks for talking to me today. Um, do you want to start by giving a short introduction about yourself? Hello, I'm Eleanor. Um, I've got a Chinese name, which is Choiwa, which I don't use because I learned from very young that people butcher my Chinese name. So I chose Eleanor. Believe it or not, it was a name that landed on a dictionary. <laughs> oh, wow. It's not a bad name. Anyway, so there, there are my, um, I'm a Malaysian. I lived in, I, I, I came to England to study. I've lived in France. I've worked in the States. And now I'm back in the UK. I'm an activist, campaigner. I write. I um, do access audits and I'm an access advisor, do all sorts of things, have many hats on, apart from the fact that I do have many hats as well, just not wearing one today. Maybe we'll see one another time. Thank you. Uh, that's great. Um, my next question is, what does Disability History Month mean to you, if anything? I've been exposed to disability history for, for, for some time, actually, um, because because in the disability circles, um, you, you have been invited to uh, several launches of disability history month each year uh, by Richard Reza, and um, and 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 go from there. I. I'm only involved when I'm involved. <laughs> um, I don't really think about it, except that this year I thought that the voices of people of color has never been included. So which brought me to the idea of doing this. Also because just before I did um, this uh, Black History Month, and recorded interviews with black disabled people. So I thought it's also important to have people of color who, and, and the intersections between disability and race and color uh, and ask people and ask people for interviews. Um, and they have been very interesting. Thank you, that's really interesting. Uh, and lastly, how has disability impacted you as a person of colour or you know, how has the identity of being a person of colour impacted on you as a disabled person? Loads actually. Um, it also, I, th I think probably as a woman as well. I think it's, I think it's tied up with um, me coming to England um, as a, a disabled person and not knowing anything about disability rights or anything really. Um, I don't think I, at that time I acknowledged myself as a disabled person. I think I wanted to prove myself to show that I can do anything a non-disabled person can do. And thinking back, I think that's why I got married uh, as soon as I graduated um, to the first man <laughs> who asked me because as a person of color coming from Malaysia, woman, uh, you, you think that no man's gonna look at you because you're disabled. Um, and then having been married and having children, it's the sort of same, sort of fight to, to sort of prove myself as as capable as a non-disabled person um, and I think that's why in a way I sort of started a collective course this is a Frida because I realized it's about the intersections of being um, disabled and a woman and I should add being a person of color as well because there's all kinds of nuances. It's, it's like peeling an onion. It's, 
you know, I married a white man. <laughs> and there's the sort of, I've sort of learned the, you, you know, history, post-colonialism and things. And, and those kind of um, feelings come into it and, and, and realization of myself as a post-colonial person, woman, and disabled, and how all those narratives are important, and where is my identity? Sometimes I, I, I wonder, and also all the nationalities. Am I Malaysian? Am I British? You know, and uh, where do I fit? Um, and as a Southeast Asian who's also from the Chinese origin but not from mainland China. You know, all those pose a lot of problems, uh, which are not always problems, makes life interesting or harder, you know. I, I Sometimes when I speak about intersectionality, I say that it's actually um, makes life more difficult because you know, you, you, you are at many tables, you get invited to many tables, but you never really accepted it at any table. And you never really feel um, at home in any of them because there will be something um, different in any of them. For example, you know, um, just, just on food, right? Um, or when you go out on dates, for example, um, you go out with a, say, a white man. Um, would he understand um, the, the sort of cuisine that you like? Now I've been exposed to a international cuisine. So if I go out with a Chinese man, let's say, maybe food is not such a good uh, example. It's just the sort of everyday issues that you deal with just watching television programs i watch a lot of chinese drama if somebody watches with me would they understand the 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 the, the history behind it the sort of culture behind it um and 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 the whole intersecting cultures it can make life more interesting or it can make life problematic because you you can't you know it's very difficult to untangle the kind of woven texture that is that's part of your life wow thank you so much eleanor um <laughs> to end just to ask you is there anything else you'd like to say before we close no not really <laughs> not at the moment thank you thank you